All right, we got to talk about the SmackDown rating, and it's a very important rating because we've been talking a lot about the bloodline, the success of the bloodline, WWE's overall success year over year, the fact this is all happening in a contract year. And uh, this bloodline, this Roman Reigns, the trial of Roman Reigns, show itself did a gigantic number in the quarter for the uh, trial of Roman Reigns. The second Another quarter. huge spike for the, uh yeah yeah WWE. it re- really like the um the first quarter was was pretty good the second quarter was through the roof the third quarter was was good which was the end of the thing and the beginning of the Austin Theory match and then um from there on it was i don't want to say normal because it was above normal but it was it was you know i mean it was it was normal for the last couple of months from that point on, it really was just that segment that was through the roof. You know, the um, the quarter hour did 3,070,000 viewers and did an 0.94 in 18 to 49, which is just beyond an ridiculous. 0.94. Yeah. 1.2. 1 million. I think it was 1 million 220. Uh, I don't have these. I have the exact number here somewhere, but it was. Over one million two hundred twenty thousand viewers in eighteen to forty nine. Um, let me see where, where that notes would be. Um, this is my rampage notes. So that is a gigantic, gigantic, oh, it's beyond number. gigantic. Yeah, I mean, I think that you. I don't know how long you got to go back to see a quarter like that, but you know, it's one million two hundred twenty three thousand um, viewers in eighteen to forty nine, and. Um, yeah, I mean, you you have to go to that back many many years. It was the best uh, number that the show has done in eighteen to forty nine since Christmas twenty twenty, but that was directly after an NFL game. So really, you have to throw that one out. So really, it's March twenty twenty. So over three years, and you know when you're talk, talking about three years of of uh, television, I mean that's that's different world. I mean even two years ago when you compared, it, it's ridiculous because consumption has changed the world has changed so much you know in the last you know even year year and a half the way people watch tv so uh the other thing is and i don't know this but um because the, the ratings aren't out the saturday and sunday ratings are not out they will be out tomorrow but from monday through friday it was the number one show on all of network television and and by a somewhat you know somewhat significant margin i think there was one i think there was maybe one show that was kind of in the ballpark but i mean pretty much blew almost everything away and i don't know if there has ever been a week where a wrestling show was number 1 for an entire week i mean obviously smackdown has been number 1 on friday nights many many times and more more you know almost every you know most weeks it's number 1 but you know for the week it's it's there's always something and and usually many things so last week it was almost number one it was uh, nascar was number one and it was number two um but i cannot recall ever a week in the history of television which goes back 75 years that um a wrestling show would have been number one in network you know wrestling's been number one in cable um, but there's a big difference between cable and network and it might be number one in all of television i you know, I don't know what other sports there were. Uh, that'll all be out tomorrow. So it, it, but it has a chance to be, um, I believe, the first week in history that this has ever happened. I could, again, I could be wrong. Um, there may have been another week, but I, I don't recall any of them. And um, it's, it's an amazing thing. And I also thought the, um, I thought the segment was unbelievable. You know, just, um. From from many different perspectives, obviously the the performance of Jimmy J, Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, Solo, all did their roles to perfection. Um, they introduced the lay as a new symbolic thing. In the um, you know, I mean, with all this stuff, obviously the focus is supposed to be Roman and J, but Solo was a strong focus, and I mean there was like. You know that thing they wanted him to put the lay on, and and they, you know, that I mean, you can see them building, you know, Roman and Solo, you know, after Roman and Jay is done, you know, probably not right away, but at some point as well. So I mean, they got a lot of juice left in this thing, and this thing has really turned, 
it's really turned the company around. I mean, the live attendance is way, way up. Um, the garden on Friday was the um, the largest gate in the history of SmackDown, other than the London show the week before, but the largest ever domestic, second largest gate in the history of pro wrestling in Madison Square Garden. And granted, you know, I mean, with inflation and everything, every, you know, every good crowd's the largest gate, you know, I mean, you know, with, uh, you know, in most cities WWE's going to, it's the largest gate, but still it's Madison Square Garden, which is the, you know, I mean, the most famous arena in the world and one of the most famous, you know, the most famous wrestling arena in the world. I wouldn't say the best wrestling arena by any means, but, but certainly the most famous. And, um, yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's no sign of a impending slowdown. I mean, it looks like everything is going to be very strong for a while, you know, and once you get moment, I mean, that's wrestling. Once you got momentum like that, it just cruises. And when you lose that momentum, it's like that uh, snowball running downwards. It's really hard to. Well, the thing with cruising too is like going back in the direction. Yes, you can you can cruise, but like this isn't even a cruise if you look at the overall next year. I mean, clearly the storyline for this year following WrestleMania is the destruction of everything that Roman Reigns has had. He lost the Usos. And we're going to do that feud going into SummerSlam with him and Jay. And then, obviously, down the road, then he's going to lose Solo. And so, ultimately, the only thing he's going to have left are his titles. And then, you know, the WrestleMania. Well, someone's beating be, him. Yeah, Cody and, and Roman or whatever it's going to be. I mean, someone's going to take the final thing away from him. And presumably, then that leads to another year where he does his redemption as a babyface or whatever. So, the ba- you know, the babyface. And then, got... we're, we're, and then what, what is it? Paul, Paul brings in guys against him? You know, yep, Paul, yep. Paul you, turns you've on him? easily got two years worth of storylines built around all of this. And uh, it's not even like cruising past, you know, we're not no, even no. at an end point right now. We're, we're, not, we're even not even halfway, close. really. We're not even, I don't know what, I don't know if we're halfway or where we are, but we are nowhere close to, um, I mean, it's not like this angle is about to, you know, whatever. I mean, this is the, the you know, again, like, number one on network TV, man. You know, Hogan, when Hogan and Andre wrestled that week, they were number 33, that's that's that just gives you a perspective. Granted, it was a lot more viewers, but that's you know that's where they were. Um, it's never. I mean, I don't even think in the gorgeous George days they were ever number one. Um, I mean, they were top ten in in you know the gorgeous George and Vern Gagne and uh, Hans Schmidt and Luthes and all that era and you know the early fifties wrestling was gigantic um, on network TV and you know it's been big on cable, but. Cable, like even in the Attitude Era when it was big on cable, I mean, it wasn't beating the top network shows at all. It wasn't even close. But now, I mean, it is. It's crazy. And um, so anyway, um, I mean, we're, you know, people, you know, want to say that somehow like this isn't hot. It is so hot. I mean, it's the hottest wrestling's been since the since the uh, 2001. It's 22 years. And people you may, you know, look back and they'll go like oh they were doing three million viewers not that many years ago all this tv's changed and they sure they certainly weren't doing these 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 crowds on a regular basis like uh like they are now i mean the the um the the crowds for the quarter and everything like that would be you know some of the highest in uh in many many years and there's so many other things when you look at them between merchandise, which has never merchandise has never been higher ever. You know, not in not in the Attitude Era, not in the Hulk Hogan Era, never been as high as it is now. And um, you know, and um, you know, I mean, and Roman is you know he's the catalyst. I mean, Cody Rhodes is doing great on Raw, no doubt about it. But um, you know, I mean, Roman, you know, I mean, there was a long period. I mean, and again, you know, it's 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 not like this is something that's been. I mean, he's been great since he went heel, and it's been building and everything like that. But even when you look back six months ago, I mean, it has gone way up since six months ago. I mean, like Roman wasn't necessarily, you know, high quarter and all that all the time last year. I mean, and and the bloodline. To me, when the bloodline first got over, I mean, as something really special, that was more Sami Zayn than anything. But now, I mean, you know, and some of it's self-fulfilling prophecy. 
Now Sami Zayn loses on TV regularly, and it's, we don't even blink our eyes. Ah, he lost tonight. He lost a couple weeks ago when uh, he wrestled Gunther, and he lost. In, and I was like, God, this is amazing. Sami Zayn's just like losing matches on TV like it's nothing. He's just a guy. And Roman is certainly not just a guy anymore. I mean, they have the guy who was the hottest guy. Um, you know, I mean, they their their belief was is that uh, he couldn't be the guy, and the guy who they think could be the guy, well, he is the guy. There's no doubt about it now. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.